Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support our channel, please subscribe. The brutal plot to kill Henry VIII, the Exeter Conspiracy. Now, Henry VIII is no doubt England's most famous king, and he is most remembered for having six wives. He was a man who was greatly paranoid and obsessed with being stabbed in the back and betrayed by his friends. Eventually, Henry turned on many of his own friends, including Thomas Cromwell and Sir Thomas More, by ordering their bloody executions on Tower Hill. But he was right to be fearful, as throughout his lands people were plotting to assassinate and overthrow Henry VIII, especially in response to some of his more divisive policies, such as the dissolution of the monasteries. But one conspiracy that took place to bring about the overthrow of the Tudor monarch was the Exeter Conspiracy, and Henry VIII attacked this with great brutality, ordering a number of executions, including organising the execution of one of his greatest friends. But what is the story of the brutal plot to kill Henry VIII? In 1538, Henry VIII learned of a conspiracy that was aimed to bring about the end of him as the King of England. Previously, due to his marriage with Catherine of Aragon, not being granted an annulment by the Pope, he split from Rome and declared himself the supreme head of the Church of England. This was a huge thing, as he forced everyone in England to turn their back on the Pope, a position which had reigned supreme over the Church for centuries across the nation. It was now treason to view the Pope in this manner, but Henry would recklessly order scores of executions across the nation to bring everybody under control. But Henry VIII was also fearful of other members of the English nobility and their possible claims to the English throne. His father, Henry VII, claimed the crown by right of conquest following the defeat of the Yorkist Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth Field during the Wars of the Roses. But many believed that the Yorkists had a viable claim to the English throne and that they in fact should be ruling rather than Henry VIII. With this, the king looked down upon possible Yorkist heirs and heiresses including Margaret Pole, the Countess of Salisbury, who later lost her head inside of the Tower of London, being executed as an elderly lady. But there was one man who seemingly the King viewed as rather harmless. However, he did have royal blood flowing through his veins, and some would say that he was more of a king than Henry VIII. Henry Courtney was the first Marquess of Exeter, and he was a, a feudal baron, and he was also the grandson of King Edward IV and was also the nephew of the Queen Consort Elizabeth of York. This made him a first cousin of Henry VIII, and the pair were close, as it was said. They had been brought up as a child with his grace in the chamber. When his father died, Henry Courtney was the heir, and he succeeded as the Earl of Devon, and he fought for his king in a number of battles against the French king, and was seen as a strong military leader. He was also appointed as a Knight of the Garter, and was given large amounts of land following the execution of the third Duke of Buckingham, Edward Stafford. Courtney gained the vacant Duchy of Exeter, Somerset and Cornwall, and this made him incredibly powerful in the south of England. Many said that he virtually ruled over these areas as a regent himself, and he continued to be close with Henry VIII, and he became the constable of the royal residence of Windsor Castle. But, on the 18th of June 1525, Henry Courtney was named the Earl of Devon, and also the Marquess of Exeter, and this time he was then sent to negotiate with the French, but he was used also as an ambassador by Henry to try and push through his annulment of Catherine of Aragon. He tried to carry letters to the Pope to convince him to allow the divorce, but this never occurred. It is considered that he was so high up in Henry's regard that Exeter was the second to the King at the Privy Council meetings, following the downfall of Cardinal Thomas Wolsey and he even acted as the commissioner for the deposition of Catherine of Aragon when her marriage was declared invalid. Exeter also was given the stewardship of a number of monasteries during the dissolution, and he was also a commissioner at the trial of Anne Boleyn and was there to hear the evidence of the charges of incest, adultery and treason against Henry's second wife. Anne later lost her head in a shocking execution at the Tower of London based on the judgment of Henry Courtney, the Marquess of Exeter and the other men who proceeded over the trial. He was also used alongside the Duke of Suffolk to deal with the Pilgrimage of Grace, but ultimately failed to do this, and he had to retreat along with his army. But by the late 1530s, he was a very powerful figure at court, 
and was governing most of the south and west of England, and one of his greatest rivals was Thomas Cromwell. Cromwell had been the mastermind of the dissolution of the monasteries, and he dug his talents into many of his rivals at court in a power play for the affection of the king. However, there was suspicion on Exeter's second wife, Gertrude Blount, as she remained a, a Roman Catholic, and she supported Elizabeth Barton, who was referred to as the Nun of Kent. This attracted criticism, especially from Cromwell, who also pointed at the fact Gertrude's father had served at Catherine of Aragon's Chamberlain, and her stepmother had also been one of her Spanish attendants, whilst Catherine was the Princess of Wales. This affiliation with Catherine of Aragon was very damaging to Exeter, especially through his wife, and Cromwell began to cast doubt and suspicion about the loyalty of Henry Courtney, the Marquess of Exeter. As he was a powerful landowner, many people who had been thrown out of their homes by the dissolution had spoken out against Cromwell and his policies, and Exeter listened to these who suffered. And he began to hate Cromwell. It was speculated that he may have even allegedly joined an uprising in Devon and Cornwall, and a rebellion did break out that carried a painted banner. But many historians claim that there was never a conspiracy or uprising backed by Exeter himself. It was said that the gathering was less a political party than a group of friends who loved the old faith, hated Cromwell and longed for a change of policy. They met and talked treason and sang political songs. They did not trouble themselves with anything so strenuous and as intellectual as a plot. It's believed that Henry Courtney, the Marquess of Exeter, fell foul of the King's hatred of Reginald Pole. It was found that Exeter was corresponding with Cardinal Pole, who was encouraging rebellion in England against the religious changes. With this, it was considered that the Pole family were dangerous, and Henry VIII rounded up whomever he could who was related to them, including Reginald's mother Margaret Pole, the Countess of Salisbury. The King took revenge out on the Poles for engaging in treason against the King, and the Pole family were destroyed completely. But Henry Courtney's name came up in the proceedings, and he was the second cousin of Reginald Pole, and Cromwell pleaded to bring him in for arrest and interrogation. The powerful Marquess of Exeter was brought into the Tower of London, along with Sir Edward Neville, Henry Pole, the first Baron of Montague, and Margaret Pole, in the November of 1538. He was accused of treason, and the accusations against him were based on the correspondence he had with Reginald Pole, the Catholic Cardinal, and possible Yorkist claimers to the throne. Edward Neville was executed for treason, and in the May of 1538, Exeter was attained to be executed, as he was accused of treason. This meant he lost all of his land in England, and Henry believed this was a good thing as he feared a Catholic invasion through these lands. Exeter, along with his wife and son, were held at the Tower of London, and he was then placed on trial for the so-called Exeter Conspiracy. He was found guilty and was beheaded by sword on Tower Hill on the 9th of December 1538. It's believed a sword was used to respect the great and long friendship he had with Henry VIII, who wanted his execution done quickly and without error. His wife would later be released, as would his son, but Henry Courtney, the first Marquess of Exeter, was beheaded in brutal fashion. Now what is bizarre is the fact that the Exeter conspiracy seems to be a power play mostly by Cromwell to stamp out a number of his high profile rivals at court. It seems he played on the King's insecurities about his possible assassination and also about his hatred of Reginald Pole to manufacture a conspiracy featuring arguable the most powerful landowner in England behind the King, the Marquess of Exeter. It was a brutal and barbaric thing for Cromwell to do, but later he too would find himself implicated in conspiring and plotting, and with this he too would lose his head on Tower Hill. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.